Okay, so hopefully you found that interesting and saw what the basic intention was of that study, which is they were able to establish that there's this little kind of dance that we go through where in the case of the study, the only thing that they were reacting to is the numbers on each other's heads. And the goal was to try and pair up with the highest number you can possibly pair up with. And of course, people were, rea were reacting to the other person. You know, like if somebody approached me, I'd look at the number on their head and I'm not going to take the hand of a person with a really low number unless only low numbers are offering me their hand, right? Like that's what is going on in that experiment. And the idea is that in real life where we don't really know how attractive we are or not attractive we are, we are simply reacting to what offers we're getting, what other, the interests that other people are showing. And so we end up with people who match us in attractiveness in large part because um, the other people are, re are matching up based on attractiveness also and are seeking us out based on our level of attractiveness relative to theirs. Um, so it's kind of an interesting thing. Now, here is a poll of Zoosk online dating site members. This is from 2014. Um, but they asked the, the dating site members, what is the most important quality on a first date? And there's a longer list and we'll go through them. But um, top of the list was physical attractiveness for both sexes. So a little bit higher for males than for females. On average, uh, males are more interested in the physical attractiveness of their partner than females are for long-term relationships. But when we're establishing early intimacy, which is what we are talking about with a first date, right? And especially a first date that we met on an online dating site, physical attractiveness is going to be our first qualification for determining whether this person is somebody who we want to get better acquainted with or not. Okay. Um... There we go. Proximity. Proximity refers to how close in space we are to the other person. So um, there's something called the mere exposure effect. <clears throat> Just by being around someone, we will start to view them as more attractive than we did when we first met them. Just by being around them. Now, again, there are the exceptions. People who are, who are just gorgeous and handsome and everybody recognizes them from the very beginning as, you know, physically attractive. But I'm talking about the rest of us sort of average looking people who, you know what, we get more attractive, the better somebody gets to know us just by being around us. That's the mere exposure effect. Um, so, you know, if you ride the same bus every day, that bus driver who you, you know, didn't really look at that hard or, or maybe you thought they were a little gruff at first or whatever, but after days and days and days of riding the same bus with that same bus, bus driver, you start to think, wow, this person is actually kind of, I hadn't noticed what pretty eyes they have or something like that. You, you know, you start to be by being around people. And that's one of the reasons why um, people so often end up dating people that they know from school or from work or someplace where they've been in proximity with the, per, with the potential partner, right? That's how come we make friends with people at school and at work. Because through that proximity of sharing a space, we have this benefit of the mere exposure effect. It's one of the downsides of the social isolation that we experience during COVID lockdown, right? Is that we don't have the opportunity to be in the same proximity of someone else and, um, you know, let them sort of grow on us, us sort of grow on them and get that benefit of the mere exposure effect. Similarity. All right, down at the bottom of the Zeus online dating site members' opinions was similar interests. They are probably being a little short-sighted by rating similar interests so, you know, at a quarter of the level of what they rated physical attractiveness. Much more important to long-term friendships and romantic relationships is sharing similar interests, similar backgrounds, um, you know, similar levels of attractiveness, Similarity is a really important factor in long-term relationships. If you think about your best friends, the ones who you have maintained a relationship with over the longest period of time, they are probably people who have sh probably for one thing, similar backgrounds, right? Because a lot of times our longest term relationships are people who we met when we were really young, which means that, you know, we've shared an upbringing together. Um, but also they share similar interests, like maybe they like the same kind of music that you like, or maybe they um, chose the same university that you chose, or um, they're in the same basic uh, socioeconomic status as you are. 
Um, those things, those similarities make it um, just in general a little bit easier to maintain an ongoing relationship because you're not always sort of working out, well, what's your position on this or that? Or what are the impacts of this or that? We're already sort of on the same page about things. And so what they find is that older, uh, you know, long-term married couples, one of the factors that they have that seems to contribute to their long-term success is a lot of similarity in their backgrounds, in their characteristics and things like that. Okay, another component of establishing early intimacy is flirting. And flirting is actually uh, sort of a universal human behavior. A lot of us think we aren't very good at flirting, but the truth is um, it's usually done unconsciously. Flirting behaviors uh, are usually um, first and foremost, maintaining eye contact is a major flirt. So if you're finding someone attractive and interesting, you stare at them a little longer. And if they catch you staring, the flirtatious thing to do is to hold their eye contact. Yep, that's right. I was staring at you. That's right. So if they continue to hold your eye contact, that's the first step in establishing interest. Both of you stared, right? Yep. They think I'm attractive too, right? And so the next step might be actually approaching, right? Um, and so now we have a little chit chat conversation. Now there are sex differences in the kinds of behaviors that are displayed during this fl flirting dance and whether the, the members of the flirting dance are the same sex or they are a mixed sex pair, you will typically see the male in the pair, um, displaying a lot more, um, you know, basically space taking up behaviors. So they'll gesture with their arms more widely. They'll sit with their legs apart. They'll use a louder voice. They'll laugh louder than usual, things like that. Um, a flirting woman is much more likely to um, do like touching of herself, touch her neck, touch her hair, um, put her hand on her own leg, um, things like that. Uh, the female flirters are more likely to throw their head back when they laugh, kind of revealing their throat. And uh, one interpretation of that behavior is showing trust that I know you're not going to, you know, tear out my throat is the interpretation. I don't know if that's real or not, but all of this is thought to be done unconsciously. And so, um, you know, whatever the motive, you know, deep down in our evolutionary history might be, this is being done and just sort of the person doesn't even know that they're really doing it. An observer can tell that those two people are flirting with each other, but the two people who are in the midst of the flirt may not realize that they're putting all these signs out. Um, so there's sort of these sex differences in the behaviors that they engage in. That's my clock chirping. In case you're enjoying it, it must be striking the hour because I've got my Audubon clock chirping. Um, so these kinds of flirting behaviors are seen across, you know, between sex differences and across all different kinds of um, pairing types. You'll see the same kinds of flirting behaviors. And uh, the less inhibited that a person is sort of just like behaving the way that their brain wants them to, the more, more flirtatious their, their behaviors can appear. Like if you're really um, trying not to seem too flirtatious, you come off really stilted because you're having to really control your behaviors. Um, so I always like to argue, you know, if you're interested in this person, just let it fly, be your normal self. Um, reciprocity of attraction is another really important factor in establishing early intimacy, because if you know that the other person is interested in you, it kind of frees you up to be more um, assertive, you know, to express your level of interest, stuff like that. It sounds a little eighth grade. Oh, did you hear that so-and-so thinks you're cute? Oh, really? I hadn't even noticed so-and-so before. Oh, oh, that it sounds like that, but it kind of is like that. When we find out that somebody else is attracted to us, they suddenly become more physically attractive to us. We're like, hmm, had never noticed how cute that person was. Um, so knowing that they like us helps us to feel more open to them and to be more willing to establish that early intimacy. So here are some other things that the Zeusk uh, respondents offered. Women, a little bit more than men, reported that they liked to uh, partner with a good sense of humor. And actually, if we drill down into that a little bit more, men tend to report that they like a person who has a good, um, who, who gets jokes really well. And women tend to report that they like someone who tells good jokes or who is funny. So um, it's kind of a nice 
like mix when you have um, a heterosexual couple that you have a male who likes somebody who appreciates his sense of humor and females like a partner who has a good sense of humor that they can laugh at. So it's kind of a good little pairing. Um, the, the within sex partnerships, they both report wanting a good sense of humor also, but it's not as clear cut who wants to be the funny one and who wants to be the laughing one. Intellectual connection. Again, it's shocking how low the Zeus reporter, you know, members reported this to be. I mean, only 11% are looking for an intellectual connection. Again, that kind of uh, um, taps into that similarity issue. Um, when two people sort of get the same issues, um, see things the same basic way, they're going to have a longer, you know, they're going to have a better chance at a longer relationship. And then confidence. Men more than women reported that they want to see confidence in their date. Um, a lot of times um, men are looking for a woman when they're, you know, heterosexual men tend to look for women who display confidence because that makes the men feel like the, the, their potential partner would be able to um, sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to say buoy their own spirits. Um, they, you know, won't be asking things like, do these jeans make me look fat and these kinds of questions. And so um, for, for men, that's kind of a tr an attractive quality, which is a good thing for heterosexual women to know that, you know, um, men like it when you're not worried about your hair, or you're not worried about, you know, you know, that you look good, or you feel confident that, that you know, your behaviors are okay, and things like that. But there's not a huge sex difference in this, um, in this quality right here. And, and what I would like to say from the female side, when looking for a male partner, um, they oftentimes want a, a male partner who's competent at whatever they do. So it could be whatever. It could be their job. It could be their, you know, their sport. It could be um, whatever they are pursuing that they're competent at that because that's a sign of, um, you know, future earning capacities and other kinds of things that are, you know, long-term things that the biologically based evolutionary drive towards finding a mate um, make women be a little bit more sensitive to than men. But these are all things that sort of bring us together early on when we're establishing a friendship or we're establishing a relationship. Um, let's take a little break here and we'll come back in the next segment and talk about Robert Sternberg's triangular theory of the factors that go into different kinds of love. <laughs> 